Ah, bolt action. Good guys, bad guys. Explosions as far as the eye can see. Well, this is one of many things I try to do, document how I paint something so I can go back again and actually remember. Believe it or not, there have been many, many projects I've finished or completely scrapped that I uh, didn't document and I've most likely forgotten for all time. But we're going to document these guys because people have asked and they shall receive. So what people are asking is, Gusto, how do I achieve peak perfection? Well, we'll start out with these airborne U.S. Troopers from Warlord Games. Now, there are two ways I usually build things up. I'll build them either piece by piece or I'll build them as a whole character. These guys, I put all the bits together as one character. Like if I do something like Space Marines from Warhammer, I'll usually do like the chest, legs, and head separately and the arms separate because that's how they really work. These guys, they work because their size, stature, work much better being placed together. Now, for primer, I usually use Vallejo. I find Vallejo to be very nice. And I will start with the Surface Primer Black. Now keep in mind, this is what I used. You don't need to use black. I just have a metric ton of black because it's the only one you could find now. The grays on back order, the grays are a very good color to use as well. You can use white. It doesn't matter too much. It should look relatively the same no matter what. It shouldn't have any bearing over what we're going to do here today because it's just really just shades of brown and it will all bleed together. Second of which is I gave it a little, how should I say, uh, touch up. I covered everything in Dryad Mark from Citadel. Yet again, an airbrush thing. Now, it provides a smooth and very fast, easy coat. That's why I did it. It cuts down painting by a million miles an hour. You can do this by hand you, as long as you water down the uh, Vallejo Surface Primer. You can put a brush on that. Uh, this, you could put a brush on this because it's already watered down. It might look a bit streaky or weird. Uh, if you have a pot of regular Rhinox hide, it'll work just as good. Now, also what I did was, ah, uh, here we go. Placed it around here somewhere. I put all the paints in a row so I can show them. Ah, oh, there it is. U.S. Dark Green. I took the opportunity to put this in airbrush too, and I thinned it down a little bit with some airbrush thinner, and I spritzed all the helms you know, just to save time. Save time. That's what it's all about. Even though it took me... Well, I got these guys in June. These were out of the Band of Brothers set where you get the ten Germans, the half-track, and bajillion paratroopers to just bonsai zerg rush the half-track um, yeah, this is the first squad. I've got most of them coming together. This was just the test batch, and they turned out pretty But moving on, we will start with the basing colors. Ah, here we go. We will do... Ah, yes, the Muse. The Muse picture's gonna pop up for us. Thank you, Muse picture. This is probably the best representation of this sculpt of a paratrooper that I've been able to find, so I just 100% tried to copy those colors as much as possible, and I think it turned out okay. But what we'll notice on his belting and buckling, it's a different shade than the actual uniform itself. It's a bit more of a hue, a yellowish, a desert yellowish. You could use Diller's Desert Yellow on that one, but I used Flat Earth. It's from the Panzer A series. Mm. A very, very beautiful color. The thing you'll notice about the Vallejo colors, their names, what they look like wet, and how they dry are all completely different. It's crazy, it's psychedelic, and I absolutely adore it. The next part we shall do is any parts that are, I would say, of a metal, or a gun, or a strap, or a buckle, we're going to paint with the black-gray. Now he's going to have, the main part you'll see will be the rifle. If he has a leather strap on his helmet, there will be a buckle. The shoes have buckles. There are straps on the pack as well as uh, the torso. And we shall go over the main uniform there. The main uniform shall be U.S. Field Drab. Now for the U.S. Field Drab, you could... 
brush it on, but it would take a very long time. It is much easier to put it in an airbrush and lightly spritz it on top of that since we layered it up with both the black and the brown. If you do it through a brush, it's going to take many layers. It's usually how I do my Imperial Guard khaki colors right there. You might need a two, maybe three light coats of a brush to actually get that looking right. There might be a little bit of the dark brown undertone, but I usually leave that there because I think it looks uh, natural coloring. And next, we're going to try a flat brown. A flat brown is going to go over any kind of leather straps that you're going to find on there. Not necessarily his uh, chest or leg kit, but the straps you'll find on the helmet. Uh, you, you will find on, if you decide to put on the med kits, that would be a nice undercoat for those. And the face, to pick the flesh out just a little bit more as well as the gun depending on the brown you want to use for your gun any of the shovel handles that would definitely go on well as well as any of the wooden trim for the Thompson and any other rifling or pistoling you can find and let's see there will be the red leather I will cover red leather in the shoe because there's going to be a magical trick we're going to use with that in just a moment so, providing we have undergone all of that, we're going to use, let's see, some shading actually, because we'll have it completely base coated out, like this little fella here. Might need to take a better picture of that. But he's going to look like this when you get done with everything, roughly. Only his holster, depending on what color you want to do. I did the holster as red brown too, or what was it, red leather, because it's going to look really sweet when you color that up on the next stage. So we're going to move on to the ink washing. Now what inks do we have? A variety of inks you could use. Sometimes if I have a green or a military green, I will use, ah, oh, there we go, if you're going to do the helmets, you've got options. You can do any kind of military shader green, which is kind of a brown and a black, and you've got green tone, which is just pure green. You've got the greatness of the Agrax Earthshade, and this one I'm going to use the Agrax, because I like it better than the Army Painter Strong Tone. There's a weird viscosity difference that I don't care for in the army painter variations and there is a dark tone which I can go over for any kind of the metallics but in this one specifically I'm going to use just Agrax all over the thing but there's an important thing I'll do anytime I mix something up if you pour a pure shade on it's often going to look way too dark or you're at least going to have a lot of to wick off to give it a little bit of a, a shade not a complete how should I say, palette transformation, because if you leave it on there too thick, it's going to be a completely different color. It's not going to be your base coat anymore. If you do a one-third glaze medium to two-thirds wash and put it on there, you might have to just wick a little bit off, but it'll give it um, a dusty kind of look. It will look natural. And that's what I'm really going for, just kind of slightly tone up the colors to look as realistic as possible. Now this is the part where you have options, especially if you're going to do the gun. You could do a black ink over the rifling or the metal parts with the black gray we used and then do a slight highlight of a lighter colored gray. You could use something like a dark sea green, which really is just gray, even though it says green, there's, there's nothing really green about that. You could use an administronum gray, any kind of lighter gray, slightly shading, and you can give it that faux middle look. The other option is you could go over it with a gunmetal gray. This one is a really unique looking gunmetal. It's not quite like a lead belcher color that you might be more familiar with. It kind of looks like, it sparkles like a diamond when you have it out. You see the full spectrum of colors, but when you put it on there, it has a very dark, almost transparent, flaky look to it. 
you can then proceed to put a black wash over that and then follow it up on the worn parts with a bright silver or brighter metallic like a shining silver usually I would go around the bolt or the trigger or the barrel edge just to the worn parts to bring it out just a tad bit now depending on what you use for the green areas like the helmet you've got options here now on the base I like to do something I like to call between the base the shade and the highlight I call it a cleanup layer now if you don't like mixing paints the cleanup layer could just be a slight very slight layering of the base coat again before you put on the highlight but I like the cleanup layer to be a mix of the two in this case I'll do a 50-50 of US dark green and uniform gray and just put some slight edging or some slight light marks across it after that I'll go straight to the highlight a uniform gray but I'll make that slightly more patchier along the edges of the helm to give it a bit more uh, light or worn look now for the braiding or the strapping you can do well, you can just go straight to the uniform green, but the strapping could be slightly darker or brighter depending on where you go. After I put the uniform green on, I'll put some combat fatigues just so it doesn't look exactly the same as the metal of the helmet. Now, for the packs and the straps on his uniform and the gun camo, what did I say, any kind of the padding or the pouching, after you've done the flat gray, what I'll do is, uh, flat earth I should say, after you've done the washing for the pouching, you can do the flat earth slightly over to clean up some areas, or what I do, I'll mix 50 flat earth with 50 tan earth, slightly clean up it just a little bit, bring out the highlights and the raised areas, and then I'll go over it with just simple tan earth again and it should look pretty decent actually now the wooden parts of the gun as well as the boots there is a very very special color this is called wood grain the thing about wood grain is it's a thicker wash it's supposed to simulate well the look of wood so you could use it on terrain, but in this case, I used it over the red leather of the boots, and it gives it that, how should I say, that dark leather pop that we see on the Muse in so many pictures of the boots during that time period. You could also use it over the gun. It will give it that nice varnished look. Now, I highlighted the gun with some orange-brown as well as the boots, I would say a mix of the red leather and the orange brown on the boots would make it look a bit tastier, but it would have to be a very thin, very extreme highlight so you don't mess up the concoction of colors that the shading put in for you. Now for the metal, or not the metal, but for the wood grain of the rifle, you can use any color you want. This is one I'm still trying to work on and figure out. I think it would be best if you put the highlight underneath before you put the wash on in this case to give it that realistic varnish look. I might need to use a slightly brighter brown because I used a flat brown on that one and it makes it too dark compared to the contrast. I might need to do a bit more line work to make give it that wooden look with the orange brown before I put the wash on to make it uh, look a bit more I'd say. Now for the main event you could clean it up with the US Field Drab, but I like to mix it a 50-50 khaki with the 50-50 US Field Drab and kind of bring up those lighter layers. Then I'll do a more of extreme highlight with the khaki itself and it gives it that, that realistic looking cloth, that flow of light if you have it just right. Some of the areas went a little bit too, too more detailed on the khaki than I'd like and they are rather apparent but it still looks pretty good obviously a lot to learn a lot to prepare for the next batch of fellows but these guys turned out pretty rock solid I'd say let's see for the flesh the flesh 
Uh, well, the skin is, how should I say, possibly the most difficult part you'll do in any figure because you're either going to make it look too dark and weird or you're going to make them look like uh, they've had all the blood drained out of them. I tried to use some of the Vallejo flesh colors, but they're they're too transparent and very weird to work with. So I went back with the basics. We've got the Bugman's Glow. We've got Cadian Flesh Tone. And we've got Kislov Flesh. I started out with the base of the Bugman's Glow. Did a 50-50 Bugman's Cadian highlight over that. Then I did a slight bit of the Cadian on top of that. And then an extreme, extreme highlight of a Cadian Kislov 50-50 ratio doing all of it. Um, trying to get flesh to look as realistic as possible without having to use shades. Though a, sh a very thin shade might work to mix everything together in the long run, but it's the point of where you're trying to find the shade. Because if you put a shade on and try to do a highlight, the highlight's too bright, it's going to look weird and ruin the effect. So it's an ever going battle of trying to make flesh just perfect. Uh, eyes, eyes are going to be a pain in the ass no matter what you do or where you come from. Even most experienced painters absolutely hate eyes. I've never met a person that enjoyed doing eyes, but as long as they're there, I will attempt to do eyes to some degree. It's better when the eyes are actually open, not these weird squinty things they have on most figures. The best thing I could say to do eyes would be before you even put paint on the model to pick out the eyes, but they might look okay, but where their eyes are pointing might be completely off from where the model is. So even though the eyes might look okay, uh, they might look just a bit zoned out. So I try to do the eyes when it's completely configured together. So you'll notice the guy aiming the rifle crouched down. It looks like he's actually looking at where he's aiming, uh, keeping steady before he fires. Yeah, when you paint them after you've assembled the figure, the eyes, it will give it a bit more direction, a bit more realism. Now you have to find the right brushes to do it. I've tried using extreme detail brushes, but I find even if you use a wet palette, the paint will dry out before you can even apply it a lot of times because it's just such a thin brush. The best bet is to use uh, a detail brush that you has a really sharp point and do more of like a cat's eye straight down. Even if you touch the flesh, it's okay if you do it before you put the actual flesh on. Just do a straight down mark and then... Well, let's back up on that. I find when you do the eyes first, even if you put a base coat on, you just gotta get that bit of white in there. You gotta find the right white. I usually use the ivory color from Vallejo on that one. I just like the way it rolls. You could use a wash, a very light wash, to pick out the rounding of the eyes so it doesn't look like it transitions into the flesh. And use a, I wouldn't say the finest detail brush, but a brush with a good point that you trust. And do a straight down line, like a cat's eye. It doesn't matter if it runs into the flesh because you can always paint around that the lids and cover that part up. The main part is getting that eye in there. Yeah, for this kind of scale, you black would probably be best because it just shows that bit of life. I've seen people that actually use colors and pupils and irises in there, and that's a whole level of good on you for being able to do that. And what we'll notice about the base, I tried to uh, do something a bit more unique with it, the basing. I painted uh, U.S. Army green around the rim to give um, the soldiers a bit more of a unique game board look to them. I think that it's just a nice stark contrast to the usual people paint it brown to fit in with the ground or green to fit into the green. I do the same thing for the Germans. I'll actually use a uh, Vallejo German gray for their basing just to give that, that semi-neat game board look to it. Uh, nothing too, how should I say, overly complex about what I did. I did the Sterland mud texture basing goodness from Citadel Colors. Very thin layer on there just to give it a bit of a dirt rock movage there. It's in a state of... It's not really complete, it's just good enough at the moment. There's a lot I could do here. Maybe add some grass, a little bit of rockage right there, 
I did put a little bit of paint on it just to give it a bit of a, a textured ground look. I used dirt splatter from... I used dirt splatter from Army Painter. I mixed in a little bit of a werewolf fur and probably going to do like a mixture of arid earth. I usually like that brightness adding to it. But there's a bit we can do here. I don't think there's too much. I don't think there's too much more we can go. Oh, there is one thing I will always recommend you do, and that is the varnish. Varnish these boys, because it will settle in the color. I use Airbrush It Vallejo Mecha Varnish. I don't like brushing on the varnish, uh, because it's... How should I say? There's a huge room for error, because if you don't get the consistency of the varnishing right, you'll have these white inked in marks where your shading is. So I don't like brushing it on. I would always recommend airbrushing, varnish, spraying, canning varnish at the least, even though that might give a frosting effect. So you'd have to be careful about that. But airbrushing definitely is the best for varnishing. I think that's everything at the moment. Thing that I think that I could do better. I think I went over that. I did. I could always do better on the rifle stocks. Could always do a bit better on the basing. Needs a bit more detail. As far as the other parts go, blend in a little better. Need to do a little bit more extreme detail on a brighter color so they don't have that apparent weirdness look to them. But they're going to do all right for right now. For any of the straps, I would say, highlighting any of the straps, especially the wood parts, you could always use the red leather or the orange browning on those, those would make it pop. There is any kind of leather color or another flat brown layer could give those a slight detailed layer up from any kind of washing you may do. As far as what I do, I do use a wet palette. I would recommend the Army Painter one. It's about $20. It's this small little six by four inch plastic trapper keeper looking thing comes with two sponges 50 sheets of paper I got it about six months ago and I'm still working through the sheet so it's gonna last you a long time for the price as far as brushes go I just use the cheapest thing I can find on Amazon at the moment I got these little nylon brushes in bulk I can link what I used at the bottom right there if that helps anybody out I still have the Gerber Jaegers to do as well because I finished a group of those at the same time so I'm going to have to write those guys up so we'll see what happens for now. Um, if anybody watches this and they took anything out of it that's fantastic. Hopefully it'll help you a little bit. 